Hi everyone, my name is MoMA and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own custom jukebox in Minecraft. I'm currently on my SMP server and behind me you can see the jukebox that I built with one of our members. Alright, now I'm in the jukebox itself and I'm going to explain to you how this whole thing will work. These buttons here are the user interface, so whenever a player wants to listen to a song they come here and push the button according to the song they want to listen to. Over here is a lamp which shows the current state of the machine. If the lamp is turned off, it means no payment has been received and the user can't play a song. And over here is the payment chest and the acceptance button. Okay, now let's try this whole thing out. So if I press this button, for example, you can't hear anything at all because the lamp was turned off. So I didn't pay anything at all and I can't play a song. Now, if I were to put in a diamond here and accept the payment, this lamp will turn on. This means, theoretically, I can choose whichever song we'd like to listen to. So let's try this out. So we see the lamp turned off, we listen to the song, everything worked great. If I try to listen to the song again, You see, it doesn't work. So if I want to listen to another song, I'd need to pay another diamond. So let's try and be cheeky and, I don't know, pay a rocket, for example. As you can see, the machine has only taken the diamond so far. So if we want to pay another diamond, the payment has been accepted again and I can listen to another song. The first thing we will need is a payment mechanism. The way I did this is using a normal item filter with a few quirks. So the first quirk is this redstone block over here, which locks this hopper so it doesn't take out all the payment from the chest up below. So you can see we have 42 diamonds in here and the machine waits for user input to take one of those diamonds. So we got 44, uh, 41 left in here. And the other way is how I configured this hopper. So instead of using um, an item like, for example, a wood block or a stick, I used a 16 item stick item, which in this case is a snowball. And because of this, I only need one diamond in the left slot instead of 40 plus. Okay, the next part of the machine is a little bit more complicated, but I'm trying to explain it to you. So over here, I build a mock-up of a locking mechanism of our jukebox. And you can see there is a ton of redstone turned on currently which means that the locking mechanism is actually active right now. So if I'm trying to play a song, like pressing this button, you can't hear anything. So I hooked up some note blocks so you can hear it. Um, but if I did press this button here, which mimics our payment input, and try to play another song, now it works. So maybe you saw, but this redstone turned off momentarily, and I will explain to you how this whole thing works. So the idea this whole mechanism hinges on is that the idea that a sticky piston can deposit blocks without pulling them back to it again um, if they get a single tick input. And we do get a, a longer input from a button or even from our item filter over there. So uh, we are using something which allows us to convert this long input into a single tick input, um, which happens over here. Now, this redstone block triggers or powers this, uh, this repeater, um, which deactivates this redstone lamp, which powers the whole locking mechanism. Now, the way this works is we're using comparators and subtraction mode. Comparisons, comparators and subtraction mode take an input from behind and an input to the side. It doesn't matter which side I'm using currently well, the right side or left side, depending on how you look at it. Um, but if this thing is powered, then this side gets an input strength of 16 and an input strength in this case of three. So we calculate three from behind minus 16. Let me turn this on so it's a bit more visual for you. So three from behind 16 from the side. 3 minus, minus 16 is less than 0. 
So the output will be less than zero, which is no signal strength at all. So if I try and press this button, you can see there, there wasn't any signal sent. Now, if I turn off this whole mechanism again, by unlocking the system, we do get a signal strength of zero and a signal strength of three. So we got three minus zero is a signal strength of three. Let's press this button. And you can see this whole thing got activated. And it works the same way over here. Now we need to transport this redstone line over top so we can grab it at the next song. Let me show you how to replicate this. So we're taking the redstone signal from this block. Uh, taking this down, taking this down. Uh, we know, let's do it with a repeater and we need a comparator in subtraction mode. Run it to the side and then we can have whatever input we like. I'm using these buttons for now. The last part is resetting the machine after a song got activated. So you can see I'm running down the redstone line down here to our new box. And the other input we take from this line is this repeater, which runs into our wall block, which runs all the way on the side of a machine. Let's do this just to be extra sure here. I haven't counted them. Um, which again triggers our our little mechanism over here, which converts a long input into a single tick input. Okay, so you can see this whole thing is unlocked. I'm pressing a button. And now it's locked again.
Alright everyone, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft tutorials and videos from my SMP server.